here in the tournament. They had five players score in double figures, and I was told that for those five players, those were career high in this tournament, including Jakia Brown-Turner, who said she struggled in previous games. During this time, she said, I needed the game, and I look to build on it today. Yes, Angel, in that game we saw yesterday, probably the Pack's most complete game since their win in Iowa City way back in early December. Yeah, it really was. It was a team that shared the basketball, that dominated the interior, that executed defensively, played consistent for 40 minutes. So we are underway, the Wolf Pack in their black uniforms, and Westfeld got a piece of Brown Turner to start things off. K.K. Bransford, the freshman guard starting in place of Olivia Miles as we look at NC State starting five. JVT, as I James has been really good as of late, so much on Sanaya Rivers' shoulders though as the primary ball handler with Johnson out. And there is Diamond Johnson. She tried to give it a go playing on that bad right ankle and Got it in a boot. We're not going to see her this weekend either. We have the week between the ACC and the NCAA tournament, and I'm sure that everyone around the country hoping that players can use that rest to their uh, advantage. And the starting lineup for Notre Dame, as mentioned, transferred in for Miles. And Citron gets it going early. I'm not sure how that would win in. <laughs> Looked like it hit the bottom of the rim and bounced in. But I like that action for Sonia Citron, giving it up and getting it back on the elbow. Notre Dame so good at playing off of those elbows. I'll be missing. And here's Citron bringing it up. Such a talent. Just a sophomore herself. First team all ACC this year, along with her teammate and good friend Olivia Miles. This is a really good matchup for Notre Dame to start out without Olivia Miles because Wolfpack, not a team that's going to pressure you 94 feet. They're not going to turn you over a lot, be in passing lanes. So Notre Dame can have an opportunity to get into a flow. It's a traveling call as you see uh, Dara Mabry along with Olivia Miles. And this is that shot you talked about. A little bit of magic. James with the hobby screen, a little bit too strong. Citron is also a very good rebounding guard. Comes up with it for the Irish. These two teams met only once in the regular season. Notre Dame won at a sold out in this Coliseum. We see a little confusion offensively for Notre Dame. Not quite sure what they're running. They need the shot from Citron, and it banked in. You know, she, Citron, she's, she's so steady, and she's so fundamental. Off the glass, that angle. You don't see a lot of young players use the glass And I know anymore. you love that. I love it. Zanaya Rivers knocks down the shot. Yeah. Well, it's a very good all-around game in there. Win yesterday against Syracuse. First game for Notre Dame, the top four seeds had double buys and didn't play until today. Westbell bottled up by three players. James tied her up. She thought she had this, the steal and the breakaway. Citron just does such a good job of getting her defender on her hip. Eyes are up. She finds the corner of the glass. for Notre Dame so far, ball on the floor. And here's the takeaway now for James. One-on-one -on -one against Citron, who played good defense, but James was able to score anyway. All right, James, 10 points and five assists yesterday against Syracuse. Rivers ran into the Evo screen. Isaiah James has been impressive, and, and she's a player who didn't get a lot of minutes early in the season, and because of injury and opportunity that she's taken advantage of, she's now starting in a lead guard position. That's a tough angle to go off glass. Rivers called for the foul in the last play. Prosper, too strong off the glass after she rid herself of the defender. Prosper, a true freshman. 
with great promise from Montreal. Here's Citron, three on two. Gonna take it all the way. Why not? Nobody's in front of you. You see an open lane, get the easy two. So right now it's NC State six, Sonia Citron six. You know, I'd be talking to us at the end of the season about Sonia Citron and just how unselfish she is that sometimes she has to remind her to take shots and now a lot riding on her shoulder. She has to really hunt shots and opportunities. Prosper finally got one to go after a couple more misses in the paint. Prosper like Olivia Miles and Uli and Roli to Notre Dame, the first two in Irish history. She's 17. Bobby, good pass to find her, and she got the spin. I still think that NC State, their advantage is on the interior. Really getting easy looks at the rim, getting post touches. Not because you have to shoot it, but they also are very good facilitators from that low block position. Put pressure on the defense. Citron goes in. And is called for the charge. Sonia Citron trying to get to the rim. Jada Boyd does an outstanding job of establishing herself outside the restricted area and taking the charge. Terrific play by Boyd, the veteran from Petersburg, Virginia. That's the first one on Sonia Citron. Needless to say, she can't get into foul trouble today. Really no one on the Irish can get into foul trouble. Their lack of depth is, is evident. You know, they're going to play this zone, so that can help. But rotations and then rebounding out of the zone is going to be important. Ball movement. Rivers got a good look. Westbell able to come up with it. Prosper waits for some help. Tried to get it inside to Watson. Madison Hayes, she played a really nice game yesterday against Syracuse. 30 minutes off the bench, 10 points, a couple of threes, look good. Maddie Hayes, another player who's taken advantage of, of opportunity. She can come in and give this team a lift. She's an excellent defender. You see she's getting the call to guard Sonia Citron. Good help defense by Boyd. Westbell left open. James directing traffic after picking up her dribble. Jump up now into single digits. James with the floater that goes in. Isn't it always with, when a lefty shoots it just looks so pretty? Yeah. I mean, that was a tough shot. A floater on the baseline side that Isaiah James put in. And down four. Yes. The Citron. With a chance at a three point play. Speaking of tough shots and tough angles, Sonia Citron continues to get to the rim, able to get it up off glass. She's got the chance for the end one when we come back. to a blazing start. She has not missed a shot, Steph White. Yeah, four for four from the floor, eight of Notre Dame's 10 points. She's gonna have to get production from multiple people, and, and that's one thing that Neil Ivy talked about in the absence of Dara Mabry when she went down with her knee injury was that I asked everybody to give me 10% more. Now without Olivia Miles on the floor, they're gonna have to give another 10%. Everybody's gonna have to step up, everybody's gonna have to contribute. And there you see Dara Mabry over there with the crutches. She has an ACL, and right next to her is Olivia Miles. Citron does complete the three-point play. And that's a lot of production sitting over there. Production, leadership, just steadiness. Mabry with that, that jersey personality, and, and there you go. Yeah, I mean, you see, you see their numbers, and look at what they're missing, scoring, rebounding, assists. I mean, Dara Mabry had 301 threes in her career, so somebody that stretches the floor. 
Rivers now with four. Yeah, the, the Mabry sisters, three of them went through Notre Dame. 803 threes between the three of them. They could shoot the lights That's out a lot or something. Yes. And Sister Michaela, an assistant coach. Under Neal Ivey, who played for Muffet McGraw, won a national championship with her in 01. I believe they beat Purdue. And, uh, and Neal won one as an assistant coach. And you're looking at the ACC Coach of the Year. Well, what an outstanding job Neal has done with this team. She's been a part of this program and the great tradition with Notre Dame women's basketball. She understands what it takes, of course, working with a mentor in the McGraw and just continuing to, to build on what they've accomplished. Hassan Prosper after the turnover buries it and will head to the free throw line. Zaya James called for it. And there is Muffet McGraw, our colleague who doing such a great job with the rest of our crew over there. And <laughs> saw her earlier today, said she misses head coaching 0%. She loves what she's doing. The stress is down and, and the pride certainly. And Neil Ivey, not just as a head coach, but as a human being. Yeah. And her wonderful son, Jaden, now in the now in the uh, NBA. But, and what a, what a way to come back after they didn't make the tournament. Yeah, no question. You know, it's 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 not rebuilding really. Really, it's 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 reloading. But Neil Ivy putting her own stamp on this program and, and continuing the legacy. Look, it's not easy to follow a legend. It's certainly not. We've seen a lot of times where where it's it's very very difficult. And Neil Ivy has just continued uh, to to take this program and to continue to elevate it. Saying always go. You want to be the person who follows the person who follows the legend. <laughs> Have a little in there because it's tough. is a charge. Jenna Brown, the uh, Stanford grad transfer. This is what River Baldwin does. She is one of the best bigs at taking charges in the country that I've ever seen. She wow, gets herself ever. in position. I mean, th there aren't a lot of, you see a lot of guards that are in position right. to take charges, but, but bigs and River Baldwin takes pride in that. Baldwin was great yesterday against Syracuse. In fact, didn't miss a shot. 14 points at all seven shots, seven rebounds in less than 20 minutes. And one of her best games of the season. Off the inbounds, won't go for James. There's Baldwin, but she brought the ball down. Rivers. James, little ball fake. And then got it in off glass. Yeah, that time used the glass. She's telling the crowd to get into it, as you might expect. This is home court advantage for NC State. Raleigh area about an hour away from Greensboro. Ebo stuffed by Baldwin. Isaiah James is so good at this little ball fake on her drives. Look, you just think she's going to kick it out for the three. And then River Baldwin again making her presence known, this time on the defensive end of the floor. 13 seconds to shoot for the Irish. Watching a minute to go in the first quarter, and that's thrown in the opposite direction of where Prosper was heading. Six turnovers for the Irish, uncharacteristic. But missing Olivia Miles, Brown in there now. She's the one who came in and played the remainder of the second quarter when Olivia went down in Louisville last week. Rivers, terrific bounce pass to the cutting. Isaiah James and Aaron Sink. The energy that Isaiah James brings to this Wolfpack team, it's huge. It's an intangible that matters, that makes a difference to your teammates. Another offensive foul on Brown, drawn by River Baldwin. River Baldwin. But execution against the zone, moving without the basketball. Look at that dime! 
by Sanaya Rivers and the float game on point for Isaiah James. So two charges on Jenna Brown, both of them drawn by River Baldwin. So Jenna Brown now has exited. Shot clock is off now for the pack. Got Evo up in the air, then lost it. And that's not good clock awareness by Bransford. <laughs> a little bit more time. That reminds me of the Hamby heave back in the WNBA, <laughs> but with Hamby, it went in. It went in, yes, <laughs> yes it did. In Vegas beat Chicago a few years ago. Now we need a heave. Good first quarter for NC State as they have an 18 to 14 lead. When we come back, we'll have more on the LIV making history. At least for that year, came back and you know she has just been the epitome of excellence since she was a player. Also the first black head coach when Coach of the Year and a regular season title in women's basketball in the ACC. Notre Dame with a big win against Louisville to win the regular season and get the number one seed in this tournament. She was just a tremendous player. The great teams at Ruth Riley and the rest and they won the title. That doesn't count. She was at Notre Dame for quite a while, as you mentioned, after being at Xavier, and then the one year with the Grizzlies and came home again to take over when Muffet retired. That is the fourth offensive foul called on the Irish. That one on Ebo. Citron on the floor, got rid of it in the nick of time. But then James stepped in the way couldn't convert. And you, you look at the lineup that's on the floor for Notre Dame, and you, know, you, you lose Dara Mabry, you lose Olivia Miles, so you've got a whole bunch of forwards on the floor that have to be ball handlers. Nine turnovers already in this ball game. They're finding a way to get themselves into a rhythm offensively, take care of the basketball, get high percentage looks. That's going to be important, not just for this ACC tournament, but for the NCAA tournament. just timing and how quickly the ball moves when your point guards are on the floor. Right now, it's not moving quickly. Westfeld with the turnaround, rebound for Collins. You know, one of the things I think that Notre Dame can also look for is KK Bransford. They give her the ball on the elbow. They ISO her. They allow her to go to work. She hasn't gotten a touch there here today. I think that's another way to find opportunities to get scores. Yeah, Bransford has not taken a shot for the Irish. Citron, with Evo, who missed some time with a lower body injury. Probably not a great shot. But one of the best things that Olivia Miles does on the floor is get easy shots for her teammates. She makes their life easier because of how she breaks down defense, because of how she delivers a ball to a shooter in a shooter's pocket, a shooter's pass every time. So right now, this team is having to individually manufacture shot opportunities, and it's tough. Miles again out indefinitely with the right knee injury. Mabry out since late January with her own knee injury, and another one and done. And, and give, give NC State credit. They are forcing Notre Dame post players to take contested jump shots. They are executing the defensive game plan. Well, they're not making shots either. No team, neither team has scored in the first three minutes of this quarter. Westbound. So that's three straight possessions where it's one pass and a shot. You're not used to seeing that from the Irish. But this is that growth period for them to figure out how to play without Miles. We're going to have to figure it out. 
Rivers guarded by Evo. Good defense. This is a terrific defensive effort by Lauren Ebo. Stays straight up, vertical. Stays connected. That's disciplined one-on-one -on -one defense. Ebo came in second in the ACC Sixth Player of the Year voting to Michaela Timpson at Florida State. Kia Brown Turner. Another great defensive effort by Prosper. These two teams are a combined 0 for 11 here in the second quarter. Prosper and Brant Bransford, two true freshmen on the floor. And Prosper should be in her second semester of her senior year in high school. That's how young she is. And another empty possession for the Irish. Brown <laughs> Turner with the shot clock into single digits. Westfeld, excuse me, with the play. Prosper can't finish, but who else? Citron there, and we finally have a basket in the second quarter. Citron into double figures. Slices the lead to two. Winner gets Louisville tomorrow in the semis. Nice. In stereo. We nice. were in sync, yes. <laughs> what a pass. And this is what NC State did so well yesterday, their interior passing. Getting the ball in that soft spot of the zone, the ACC logo, and finding the right pass. That one was to Boyd, and then it works on the other end as Watson down Bransford. First bucket for KK. And, and KK Bransford's going to have to be a part of this offensively. She's going to have to be an initiator, a facilitator. And she's very versatile offensively. Get her touches in different positions. Good double team, so State had to kick it back out. James Short. Good box out by Watson, the Oregon transfer, her first year in South Bend. Were bottled up by Hobby. Boyd, JBT, a little bit too strong. Westbell, the only player under there for the rebound. I'm not sure that NC State's gotten a ball reversal. Getting sometimes to the high post position, but they haven't really forced the Notre Dame zone to shift with multiple passes. Transfer over Brown Turner. Prosper could not save it. <laughs> NC State with the one pass with Westmore have won three straight ACC tournament titles coming in to this tournament. And they are the eighth seed. And Westmore. Doing such a great job, but a huge turnover as far as uh, personnel this year. Trying to fit these new pieces in with a couple of veterans like Boyd and Brown Turner. Boyd scores. This is Notre Dame. They have five tournament titles. They had the first four as soon as they came into the league. But the school that has the most ACC tournament titles isn't even in the league anymore. That would be known. Conference relocation. Yep. And then they went to the Big Ten and made some noise. That is true. Changed the way the Big Ten played. Yeah. And now you know? it's one of the best. Mm -hmm. This game, as you can tell by the score, is not setting any offensive records. Neither team has hit a three-point shot. Combined 0 for 10. These aren't the records we want. No. Prosper. 
Got in there. Boyd thought it went off a crosser. So does Wes Moore. T.R. Cruz hearing an earful from Wes. Rod Creech and Talisa Green, our other officials this afternoon. But, but a little concern now. That is Nat Marshall as Neil Ivey comes over to check on her. Looks like Prosper and Marshall collided. Prosper got her with her elbow. Not Aaliyah Marshall. Junior from Queens, New York, went to Christ the King High School. It's pretty, some pretty good players. Yeah, just a few. Yeah. <laughs> Might have heard of them. Two Bird, yeah, a lot those, of them. Those guys. Citron blocked by Boyd. Citron with 11 of Notre Dame's 18 points, also with seven rebounds. Westfeld off the inbounds. Maddie Westfeld is one of the players for Notre Dame that's going to have to step up. You know, she's a player who a year ago averaged 12 points a game, is down just a little bit this year, but has been a little up and down. And I, I think the Irish need her to step up and be an offensive presence. And with that bucket, Maddie Westfeld, Westfeld is now over 1,000 career points at 9.99 coming in. Prosper up in the air. Well, Hayes had a good look, but couldn't get it to go home. Well, that was Westfeld's first basket after she missed her first five shots today. Citron looking for some help. Prosper stepped on the baseline. Turnover number 11 for Notre Dame. They average just over 15 per game on the season. You see Marshall's got the ice pack on the eye. Side. Two minutes to go in the first half. Nothing coming easy for either team. No. Ball's not really moving. Not getting any breaking down of defense. It's been one or two pass and, and contested jump shots on both ends. Ransford out to Citron, who's guarded by Hayes. Tip pass. Another turnover for the Irish. Brown Turner, a little bit too ambitious. Taylor Tannenbaugh taking over with our studio folks. Is that Notre Dame Irish green she's got on over there? Ivory Latta, as usual, chilling. And of course, the one and only Kelly Gramlich. Former great sharp shooter at Clemson. Looking forward to hearing from them at halftime. But great to have them here. They will be here all weekend. I don't know, Gramlich and Latta, great offensive players. And I don't know, I bet they're not loving the second quarter. <laughs> I'll bet not. We, we want to see the ball go through the net, don't we? Yeah, both teams combining for only 10 points so far in the second quarter. Clock into single digits. Citron got plunked by Hayes, who put her arm up to defend her and instead fouled her. First one for Maddie. Former Mississippi State player, now in her second year with the pack. So the shot clock goes back up to 20 for the Irish. Westfeld 
Nice. Yeah, that was a nice looking move by Maddie Westbell. Created just enough space, soft touch. Ties the ball game up, and now the Wolfpack fans getting a little restless. Boy, that's got to be a walk. And it is. Good call, fans. Good Thank call. you. That was, a, that was a very good call. Yeah. <laughs> Maddie Westfeld goes to work on the block and is really patient, is able to shoot over the outstretched contested hand of Jada Boyd. So now the Irish have the opportunity to use up the rest of the clock in the half and take the lead. Westfeld over the Ebo screen. The first three of the game for either team. The Irish on top, their first lead since it was eight to six. They outscored NC State 11 to four in the second quarter. And the Irish lead it by three. Citron with eight or 11, pardon me, eight for James to lead the way for NC State. Both teams shorthanded, no Diamond Johnson for the pack, no Miles. Seven of those 11 points again in the second quarter came courtesy of Maddie Westfeld. Only one made three in the entire first half between the two teams, and that was Westfeld late in the second quarter. It's gonna change this half. It's gonna be raining threes. You, got, you feeling it? Feeling it. There's a two for Ebo. Let's go over to Angel Gray. Westmore at halftime told me that he's not too thrilled about being out rebounded 21 to 13 on the boards. He said, we have to have a different sense of aggression, a sense of urgency coming out in the second half. He also said that Notre Dame's man, when they switched to that, was giving them some issues. So he's wanting to see if he can have a few more ball screens at the top of the key involving Ebo. Meanwhile, Sonia Rivers with a terrific pass. Yeah, it sure was, and Jada Boyd getting one of those paint buckets that we talked about. Uh, I think that in the Wolfpack, they have really good post players who make great decisions once they get the ball. Continue to try to get them some touches. And the 54 paint points yesterday for the pack against Syracuse was a season high, and it like the Irish are thinking the same thing. Hey, that is textbook. Give it up. Repost at lower position. Lauren Ebo going to work. There's five games, lower body injury, working her way back. Second leading rebounder on this team after Olivia Mullins. He was out with a knee injury. Citron, three on two. Rivers came out to contest a little late. Biggest lead of the game for the Irish. You have to respect Sonia Citron's ability to shoot that mid-range pull-up, and she just hesitated just enough to get James to bite. Right, because you know she can get you on either level. Oh, the diagonal, yeah, it was a little late. A little bit late. See, that's the difference in getting a shot up and not. Yep, leading to a turnover as well. Westmore gonna make a couple of subs at the next whistle. KK Bransford getting a start today for Miles. Westbell giving it up to Watson, who had to get, she was stuck under the basket and was able to maneuver for the shot. Watson's first points. Now here come the, the Pack fans. Trying to get their team back into this game. Avi got the little roll. Second basket for Camille Hobby, who has already gotten her undergraduate degree at State. Citron got points by James. Sonia Citron in transition. You see just a slight hesitation to get James to bite. Gets the two. And nice pass by Maddie Westfeld. And Kylie Watson understanding where she was on the floor. Does a good job of splitting the defenders. And getting the bucket. Watson finished the regular season very strongly for the Irish as Citron goes to the line. Prosper back into the game. Bransford. Citron, an 80% free throw shooter. 
Freshman of the year last year in the league. First team all-conference this year. One out of two. Ebo couldn't handle it. against Evo, nothing doing. Westbelt, Westbelt head up, Prosper is going out of bounds as she tried to tip it back to Watson. And then Watson just came blasting in to try to get the loose ball and mostly got Isaiah James. ball was deflected and Kylie Watson just hustling in after it and colliding with Isaiah James. And unfortunately, Isaiah James is able to get up and because that, that looked <laughs> that looked nasty. It's like a football play and thank goodness Isaiah's foot wasn't planted because that really could have been bad for her knee. And then she floats one in. Yeah, she's got really great touch on her floater. Had 10 points against Syracuse yesterday, 10 so far this afternoon. Quarterfinal matchup, winner gets Louisville in the semifinal tomorrow. Westfeld kicking it out around the horn. Watson lost the dribble and then got it blocked by Rivers. Shot clock way down. Chased down nicely by Watson, so they get an extra 20 seconds. Settle it down a little bit. Citron getting some instructions from Neil Ivey, who is a tremendous point guard herself. Off the rim. And then Citron fouled Rivers trying to get the ball. Well, Zaya James able to bounce back up from that collision. And then on the other end, she's been so good on that baseline, the floater. See, she's still a little bit shaken up. That last foul, by the way, not on Citron, but the second on Watson. And she had one of those yesterday, too, yeah. in the game against oh, that's Syracuse. That's a great point, yeah. That's a couple of hard knocks for her. Six now for James, who traveled. Picked up a little bit on the way in. Sly James, a sophomore from Virginia Beach. At 20 at Virginia Tech towards the end of the regular season. Terrific game with a lot of her family on hand. Face guarding Citron. Little lob into Watson. Nice pass by Westbell. Yeah, and, and much better ball and player movement for the Irish in the second half. Multiple players are touching it. It's crossing the midline two and three times, and as a result, they're getting higher percentage looks. Yeah, you made that point, especially in the first quarter. Notre Dame, just a lot of one pass and shoot possessions. JBT, a little bit too strong. Watson was literally <laughs> holding. River Baldwin, that's her third foul. Celebrate Jimmy V's incredible legacy of never giving up and the impact of the V Foundation over the last three decades. Join our celebration and support Jimmy V's dream of victory over cancer at V.org slash donate. 100% of your donation goes to cancer research. And of course, NC State, the uh, school where Jim Balvano won that improbable national championship. It's been 30 years since that speech and the, the good that that organization has done, the lives it has saved. Absolutely, the, the, the lives that have been saved, the awareness that has been raised, and of course, Kay Yao as well, the NC State women's basketball coach and the Kay Yao Foundation, but just what, what an impact 
his legacy has been able to make. Count it. Good out of bounds execution. Tanaya Rivers right away, inbounding, knowing she's getting it back. Elevates over Citron, able to get the two. Second on Citron, seven points now for Rivers. Five point advantage. Westfeld, good spot for her. She's looking really confident. Spotting up. She sure has, and she's been in rhythm. And I think Notre Dame can continue to try to get her some touches off the move. And again, you think about Maddie Westfeld, and she's a player who played the forward position, the post position early in her career, and now because of injuries, opportunity to play on the perimeter, and she's taken advantage of it. Prosper with the rebound. Westbelt has the only threes in this game by either team. Citron, oh my goodness. Oh, that was nasty, Sonia Citron. And reiterating, she's a sophomore. <laughs> I know. You know, the thing about Sonia Citron is she's just st so steady. She's so consistent. You always know what you're going to get. I mean, she's really just scratching the surface. Quick little crossover. Getting by one of the best defenders in the league in Sanaya right. Rivers and making it look easy. Wow. But you're right, I mean, her expression rarely changes. Baldwin plumped by Evo, and then she gives out the primal scream. We talked about paint points, and there are a lot of different ways to get them. River Baldwin does a good job of pinning Lauren Ebo under the rim and getting the offensive rebound put back. Westbell gets the miss. Baldwin one of four today from the floor after hitting all seven of her shots yesterday and their win over Syracuse. Bransford tried to lay it off to Ebo. from James, contact but no foul. Citron, Prosper couldn't handle it. Turnover number 15 for the Irish. Much better shooting in the third quarter. Yeah, second quarter, NC State, season low four points. Dame has hit three straight shots now, and an offensive foul on the moving screen. Norn Ebo shook her head and said, yep, that's the call. That's the only time I've seen players agree with the call, right? Yeah, right. right there. It was the other way. Yeah, and it was. River Baldwin just continuing to, to move into Sonia Citron. First one on Baldwin for the state transfer. Evo and Baldwin have a nice little battle going on. Evo can't do it. Baldwin with the screen gives Rivers just enough room. Timeout on the floor. NC State getting closer thanks to Rivers. They're down six. You've dreamed about the perfect house. Wolfpack trying to make their run here. Just a two possession game and Sanaya Rivers trying to do everything she can to will her team to a win. And probably 
Speaking about that film she watched on WNBA players, specifically Diamond DeShields, she told us that in a game we did earlier that that's one player that she kind of gears her, her game towards, and she's been compared to as well. I looked it up, both are 6'1", had that athleticism to the rim, and also playmakers. I don't know how you feel about the comparison, but in her sophomore season, her ceiling so high. Yeah, I think you're right. Her ceiling is, is high, and I would like to see her do a little bit more of, of that right there and, and hunt some shots offensively. I think she can be a really good offensive player as Maddie Westfeld continues to stay hot from three. Maddie Westfeld now with three threes. The only threes in the game. State is 0 for 8 from distance. Rivers elevating. Tonight Rivers also the only North Carolina native on the Wolfpack team. She's from Wilmington over on the coast, the Atlantic coast. And she didn't get a lot of playing time when she was down at South Carolina, won a national championship. T tough to crack, and it's a pretty good yeah. lineup, right? It's <laughs> it not like pretty she was good sitting behind me. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Up. But she's certainly getting her opportunity here at State. Yeah, she absolutely is. And you know, the opportunity to, to, to come back to the state of North Carolina and to be a part of this NC State Wolfpack program. A spell, no. Ebo kept it alive. Bransford gives. Notre Dame a second chance. Inside a minute to go in the third quarter. Winner gets Louisville tomorrow in the semi. Citron wide right. Rivers, here she goes. Guarded by Westfeld. Whistle on the play. Westfeld Falder. That is the second. And the junior from Kettering, Ohio. Her sister played for Muffet McGraw. And earlier in this game, Maddie went over the 1,000 career point mark. They get a lot of those siblings that come through yeah. the programs, right? I think it's a family, family deal when you go to Notre Dame. Rivers at the line. Now into double figures. Great player coming out. In fact, was a national player of the year, according to USA Today. Made all of the All-American teams, including the McDonald's All-American game. Wolfpack showing a little three-quarter court pressure. Citron dribbled it out. Nice well guarded by Boyd now. Sonia Citron just bowled her way in. Third foul on Sonia Citron. Well, the step up screen and Citron just drives it right in between two players. And it looked to me like River Baldwin was still move moving. And she wasn't moving backwards, she was moving sideways. That's one of Baldwin's specialties, drawing charges. Shot clock off. Rivers, still no threes for NC State. They're outscored by four points in that quarter. Notre Dame up seven as we head to the fourth. And player of the year, Liz Kitley takes on Miami. And then it's North Carolina and Duke for the third time. Muffet McGraw, her husband, Matt. And yes, that young man, Marcus Freeman, the head football coach at Notre Dame, coming out here to support the team. Nice of him to make the trip down to Greensboro. Foul out on the perimeter on Prosper. Marcus Freeman taking over that program. Matt still obviously heavily involved. We saw him all the time when Muffet was the head coach. And I, that'd be tough for Muffet still to watch. And NC State. Trying to get something going offensively. Jakia Brown Turner still. 
No threes. Lots of contact. Right, Brown Turner 0 for 5 from the floor. Only has a couple of points. After 16 yesterday against Syracuse, that included a couple of threes. Hayes ran into Citron. Citron playing with three personal fouls. Hayes just picked up her second. If you're just joining us, no Olivia Miles out indefinitely. We expect some sort of an update next week. Screen left is Dara Mabry, who has been out since January 22nd. Tore her ACL, also a tibia plateau fracture against Virginia. And not, not just one, but two. Huge losses. Two huge losses, two primary ball handlers, two players who can play point guard, and now the Irish, they have a big lineup on the floor at all times, from players playing out of position, but everybody's stepping up and contributing. No Diamond Johnson, foot in the boot for NC State. They hope to have her back for the NCAA tournament. Maddie Westbound playing on both ends of the floor. Got 13 points right behind Citron's 18. 11 points for Rivers, 10 for James. The two players in double figures for the pack. Another collision. And if that's on Watson, yep. Foul number four on Kylie Watson, so Lauren Ebo has to come back in. The Notre Dame bench wafer thin with all of the injuries. And now foul trouble for Watson. Rivers shows you her ups. Westfeld coming away with it. Citron put the brakes on pretty quickly after she got close to Niel. And she's like, hold on. Citron, perfect. First look that she's gotten without the ball in her hands. She's just such a tough cover because she can do so many things well and her pace coming off the of screens is so good. But I like this, her being able to give the ball up and somebody else initiate offense. And Maddie Westbelt sets a great screen. Citron creates space. Miles and Mabry like that. And they're just like, yeah, those threes, I know a thing or two about threes. Just a little bit, right? That's the first three made by somebody not named Maddie Westbelt in this game. State 0 for 10 from distance. They normally make around six per game. Around Turner, after being fouled by Bransford, gets them both. Well, Citron and Westbound shooting well from the floor and getting most of the points, that combination. Notre Dame shooting 45%, the pack 36%. And Evo delivers down low. Citron with another assist. That little Prosper action for you? How about that block by Kassan Prosper? Are you kidding me? Just when you think Sanaya Rivers has an easy lane to the rim, Prosper says, no thank you. Swats it out of bounds. Prosper, both of her family, or both of her parents, pardon me, played collegiately at Concordia University in her hometown of Montreal. Rivers with the basket. 10 point deficit, seven and a half to go. Citron, gotta be careful. They're trying to draw charges on her. Remember, Sonia is playing with three. This is just a heck of an individual effort by Prosper using her length. Outstretched hand, look at that. <laughs> yeah, we talked to Niel Ivy last week and she's so excited about Prosper. Says that she's got kind of like a coach's dream again. Came out, she should still be in high school. 
film junkie, wants to learn, takes instruction, very coachable, and you can see that athletically. Wait till she grows up. Yeah, of course, and, and Neil Ivey said it was such a blessing at the time that she came, uh, especially Dara Mabry lost not soon after that. Gives him another body, another perimeter player. Terrific individual defender. 6-2 freshman. Ball goes over to the Irish as Boyd goes out of bounds. And the fans, Pack fans get a little surly right now with their team down 12. Well, it's been a physical game, you know, but it's it's been able to be physical on both sides. It's certainly, it's tournament time. It's March, Pam. Almost a turnover. It looks like Jada Boyd might have turned her ankle a little bit, but she gets up. Ebo into Citron, who got fouled by Rivers. Yeah, much better ball movement by Notre Dame in the second half. Second foul on Rivers. James coming in now for Hayes. Citron heads back to the free throw line. She is four for five. A reminder to fans to download the ACC Three Point Challenge app presented by New York Life to help benefit the local boys and girls club. Score points for your school. After the tournament, local boys and girls club receive a donation from New York Life based on their affiliated ACC team's final ranking. 14 point advantage is the largest lead of the game for the Irish. Hobby took steps. Good defense by Ebo. Twelfth turnover for Westmore's team. NC State projected to be a seven seed by Charlie Cream. Selection Sunday, a week from Sunday coming up. He's got Notre Dame as a three. Which means they would host. Always big. Shot clock at five, it's Citron time. Ebo had it taken away by James. Doesn't have numbers, but she's going to challenge Westfeld. Backs off. And a foul called as Boyd gathered the ball in the lane. Second on Bransford. Four team fouls against the Irish. The next one will send the pack to the line. Wolfpack have not been able to get many shot opportunities here in the fourth quarter. Everything is highly contested. The Irish continue changing up their defenses, playing in the 2-3, playing in the man-to-man. -man. There's Jakia Brown. Turner getting the three. The first three of the game for NC State. They had missed their first 10. And that gets the crowd going a little bit. Watson's going to come back in with four fouls for the Irish. Westbell. Foul on Notre Dame. Miscommunication in the zone in the half court. Jakia Brown Turner able to capitalize. State. Well below the Rabbit Star stuff. And, and this is big Pam right now. NC State's having trouble scoring the basketball in the fourth quarter, and now they're at the foul line in the penalty for the rest of the game. So if I'm NC State, I'm looking to continue to put pressure on this defense, attack, force rotations, get high percentage looks, get opportunities at the foul line. 
It's the best of both worlds. You can score with the, cl with the clock stopped. James just a 65% free throw shooter on the season. On both. And big time pressure on Bransford. You couldn't even hear the whistle because the crowd is so loud. NC State looking to try to turn up the pressure, and Jada Boy just a little over aggressive. Citron over to Bransford. This second half, Notre Dame much more like the Fighting Irish. 14 assists in the ball game, and coming out of halftime, nine assists to four turnovers. In the first half, Pam, it was five to 12. Yeah. So moving the basketball more, sharing the basketball, and as a result, getting better looks. A timeout with Notre Dame up 11. The Ally ACC Women's Tournament is brought to you by Ally. Whatever you're saving for, we're all better off with an Ally. Both games by a total of five points. This is the sixth time Notre Dame has come into this tournament as the number one seed, and the other five times, they won it. First four years they were in the league, and then again in 2019, number one seed, thanks to their win over Louisville, and Duke's loss to North Carolina on Sunday. And they have played a really good second half. Everything coming difficult for State on the offensive end. JVT with another three. Her second. And then the steal, Boyd scores. Neil Ivey decided not to take a timeout. Watson and got clobbered by James. That's five quick points for State. NC State had a couple opportunities for a ball reversal, didn't get it, but they got it right on time for Jakia Brown Turner to knock down a three and then defensively continuing with this pressure. Sanaya Rivers gets the deflection, the steal and the putback for Jada Boyd. And foul on James puts Watson on the line as Westmore talks to Jakia Brown Turner, his only returning starter from last year's team. Huge board for Westbelt. Sure was, Maddie Westfield. What a job to get in position to get that offensive rebound. Her eighth, making her ninth rebound. Watson knocked away by Collins. Two on one. They save it for Rivers. Citron couldn't handle it. Boyd missed the first time. The second one won't go in, and Maddie Westfield. Got another rebound and a foul has been called on NC State. Boy, Westfeld just now with 10 rebounds on the day. James has picked up another foul. She's got four. And you saw the frustration on Jada Boyd's face. She wants that one back. Had a couple opportunities at the rim. So Westfeld with a double double today, 13 points and 10 rebounds. Now at the free throw line, both teams in the bonus. I cannot say enough of how Olivia Miles 
is not just a vocal leader with her team on the floor, but on the sidelines as well. To mention assistant coach Sherelle Allen is not with Notre Dame due to personal reasons. So Olivia Miles is sitting in that assistant coach chair being vocal and trying to do everything she can from the sidelines to give this team energy. Sitting right next to Michaela Mabry. She's actually been standing a lot over there on the bench along with Dara Mabry. The two injured stars for this team. Colin stuffed by Watson. Irish ball. And again, Olivia Miles out indefinitely. The Irish not getting more specific than that. And they only have two good legs between them, but they're still <laughs> getting up and hopping around and celebrating. And, you know, and that's your two vocal leaders. And Neil Ivey talked about when Dara Mabry went down, how Olivia Miles had to step up from a leadership standpoint. She couldn't rely on Mabry on the floor anymore. And now Olivia Miles is out, and that's got to be Sonia Citron, Maddie Westbell, two of your more experienced players in this system on the floor. Citron, that's off the mark. James Watson is able to knock it away. Great hustle by Kylie Watson. I mean, just when you think NC State may have an opportunity in transition, what a hustle play by Watson. State retains possession with 26 seconds to shoot. Get an opportunity now for the Irish to get your defense set. Brown Turner, got a good fourth quarter. A couple of threes and now that two. Let's go brings it over the timeline. Prosper's going to wait for Citron. Tony Citron coming off a of season high 27 in the win at Louisville last week, turning it up when Miles got hurt in the second quarter. She's got 23 today. Rivers commits the foul. Two on that trip. A sophomore from East Chester, New York. That's tipped. Leads to a turnover. That's a dangerous place to give KK Bransford the ball. Oh boy, wasn't it? Neil Ivy didn't like what that was looking li uh, like. So what is that timeout? <laughs> We'll take one as well and be back in 30 seconds. Welcome back to Greensboro where Notre Dame is holding on to an eight point advantage. Just a little over a minute and a half left to go in the second of four quarterfinals. Pam Ward, Stephanie White, and it is champ week here. The ACC championship will be Sunday at 1 Eastern time on ESPN, followed by the SEC. We'll be in Minneapolis for the Big Ten Caitlin Clark, Sunday at 5 Eastern time. They got a couple of games yeah, first. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I know. It's just so much fun to watch it her is. play. Then the Pac-12, the Big 12, Angel Gray with us as well. Maddie Westbelt and Sonia Citron really coming up huge with no Olivia Miles today. No Diamond Johnson for NC State. They're going to rest her until the NCAA tournament. Westbelt with a double-double today. third of the season. Clock right now is Notre Dame's best friend. Brown Turner with the foul with 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Second one on her. And both teams in the bonus. Brown Turner with 10 points here in the fourth quarter, but we're running out of time. Got them both. 
So Citron has backed up last week's 27 point game with 26 today. Pretty it's not good. bad. Not bad. Yeah, back not bad at all. And, and she's doing this while being the primary ball handler for this team. And a lot on her shoulders. You, she's unfazed. Doesn't seem to be rattled by much of anything. Nice by James. 13 points for her. Big time pressure. They need to get the ball. A ball handler by committee for Notre Dame. And Rivers took it away, and then a subsequent foul on Bransford. Well, you certainly don't want to foul right now if you're the Irish. Give NC State opportunity to score with no time running off the clock. When you think about this as sort of, you know, a, a, an easy into game for the Irish, a team in NC State that doesn't usually press a lot, don't turn people over a lot, can do this ball handling by committee. But as they continue to face different types of teams, how will they be able to handle consistent pressure? 94 feet in the half court, get into offense, be playmakers for yourself and other people. Another timeout in Greensboro. 30 second timeout. Let's take a look at our Bojangles big bow moment of tonight's game. Sonia Citron, they needed her to have a good game, and she did. She sure did, and she was absolutely huge. Not just big <laughs> for, for Notre Dame. I mean, scoring in a lot of different ways, particularly early in the ball game, giving Notre Dame some easy buckets, and, and then I, I felt like did a much better job of managing her team in the second half. Multiple players touched the ball, it got moving a little bit more, more assists, less turnovers, and just being that constant, consistent presence on the floor. One point behind her season high of 27, which she had at Louisville on Sunday when Miles went out of the game. They are looking more and more like they will be playing Louisville for the third time in the semis tomorrow. Citron also has five assists and eight rebounds. I'm not sure why NC State's not fouling. Now, Wes Moore is saying, come on out and foul her, but it took a while. I think he wanted a double team to try to get a quick maybe trap and steal out of a trap and whoever was supposed to come didn't make it. Okay. Well, that ultimately resulted in the foul on Rivers. And way too much time running yeah. off the clock. Just 38.9 seconds left to go and Citron back at a familiar spot. Ties her season high. James able to recover. Rebound, good effort by Hayes to try to get to it. And another whistle against the Irish. And that will foul out Kylie Watson. So Ebo will come in for her. Watson five points and a rebound this afternoon. Ebo comes back in. Madison Hayes, Madison Hayes, the Mississippi State transfer. Her first trip to the line this afternoon. It's a boat. Notre Dame takes the timeout with 28 seconds left. Two more basketball games for you this afternoon on the ACC Network. And there is the number three seed Virginia Tech Hokies. Liz Kitley back to back ACC Player of the Year. Saw Kayla King coming in and 
see her there. One of your favorites, right? Georgia Amor. Absolutely. One of my favorite point guards in the conference, in the country. And the improvement that she's had from a year ago, just from a confidence standpoint, offensively, has been fun to see. And they will be playing Miami in our nightcap this evening. First, at 6 Eastern time, it's Duke, North Carolina. Carolina has beaten Duke twice this year. And NC State, 10 straight wins. Remember, they are the three-time defending champs in this tournament. Have not lost in this tournament since 2019. And again, too much time running off the clock. No sense of urgency right now for the Wolfpack. JBT with the foul. Okay, Bransford. ACC All Freshman was the freshman of the week in the last season. The, the last week of the season, pardon me. She also helped pick up the slack in the win at Louisville, 14 points. Wes Moore takes the timeout. So these, the teams we're gonna see tomorrow barring a big comeback will be Notre Dame and Louisville in the semis. They played last Sunday in a good one. 76 all. Notre Dame a chance to win it. Citron will inbound. Miles for the win. That wasn't last Sunday, that was a couple of weeks. The first time they played, and it was in overtime when Olivia Miles hit the three to win that game. And then last week when Miles went out late in the second quarter, Notre Dame came from behind to win at Louisville. Now we get them, now they're gonna get them for the third time. And that's the way it is shaping up. We're gonna go ahead and Push it through. That will be at noon Eastern time tomorrow on the ACC Network. Virginia Tech, Miami, Duke, North Carolina. The winners will play after that in the other semi. So Tiara Cruz comes over and tells us that the timeout hasn't officially been granted yet. There is a potentially unobserved contact that they're looking at. Lauren Evo shove in the back of Mimi Collins. And if that's the case, I mean, again, the Irish is not smart plays, the defensively fouling and this unnecessary contact on that play as well. Each of these opportunities for the Wolfpack to score with no time running off the clock. It's Rod Creech. Rod Creech along with Tierra Cruz, Lisa Green, the third member of the officiating crew this afternoon. I don't know if you're looking at it to be an unobserved intentional foul. I don't know that you can you can call that. NC State had a four-point lead after one in this as we take a look at it again. They only scored four points in the second quarter when the game turned. Now the officials are discussing it. I'll take this time to thank Seth Miller, our producer, Matt Wilson, our director, Anthony Abra Abrahams, perhaps the best. After Everything. Review, we have an intentional foul on 33 for Notre Dame. It would be two shots for North Carolina State and then a ball on side out. Well, that is so big. And you just want the game like to run out the string, right? Get out of here with the W. So, yeah, it's just not a smart play. No. So you get two free throws and the ball. Potential for a four or five point play. Amy 
Collins' first point of the game. Kicks it out to Rivers. You don't have to settle, you're in the penalty. Go to the rim. Not a great shot and it took a lot of time. And, and again, like you don't have to settle. Notre Dame has shown that they will foul you if you go to the rim, put some pressure on it. Zaya James has just fouled out of the game for State. 14 points, five rebounds and four assists. You, you look at just the, the game situations and you know double digits on the clock. You've got plenty of timeouts. You just want to get a quick score. If you can get an opportunity to get a layup, get a foul, or get a drive and kick for a shot, then you foul and you got timeouts to move the ball. Citron, another one for two at the line trip. She gets a new season high in scoring. And the Fighting Irish hold on to beat NC State 66-60. The L. Ivy's club moving on to the semifinals where they will play Louisville for the third time this season. Citron, 28 points, nine rebounds, five assists. Maddie Westfeld with the double-double. 